Welcome back to eHermes, your electric adventure travel channel. Today's video is a detailed test to determine how much range is lost on a Tesla Model Y long range all wheel drive when a Yakima Grand Tour 16 roof box is added to the roof rails that we always have on the car. One reason we want to run this test is because we are going to be doing a long road trip comparison of this 2021 Tesla to our new 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning. However, when we do the Tesla part of that trip, we will have the roof box on the car, which we know will reduce efficiency and range somewhat due to the additional wind drag it adds, but we want to know by how much. Please keep a lookout for that upcoming Tesla Model Y versus Ford F-150 Lightning long Northeast Ohio to Southwest Florida video as soon as we take delivery of the Lightning, hopefully in late May. That would be an excellent reason for you to subscribe and hit that bell button so you are notified when we post that. We have reset the trip, actually all the trips, to zero. So we will see the total energy used and the average energy used on both legs. The parameters of this road trip will be a fairly long drive, mostly at highway speeds, first without the roof box, then on the same day with hopefully similar weather to take the same trip with the roof box on the car. In both cases, we will start from a house with an, about an 80% battery charge. The cabin will be preconditioned and kept at 70 degrees. No heated seats or steering will be, will be used. We will drive at the same speed to the extent the traffic allows us on the exact same route, separated only by the time it takes to mount the roof box and top the car back up to 80% charge. In order to keep that to a minimum, we will stop at a supercharger on the return of each trip to expedite the charging so we only need an hour or so at home to get back up to 80%, which is about how long it will take us to get the roof box on the car and secured. We have used the roof box last year on one camping trip and it did not seem to reduce range terribly, but this is the best real world controlled comparison we can come up with. Let's see what happens. The route will take us on US 422 West to the confluence of 422 and Interstates 271 and 480 southeast of Cleveland. We will then take Interstate 480 West across the southern edge of Cleveland, then on to Interstate 80 East, where Interstate 480 ends into it, southwest of Cleveland. We will then take Interstate 80 East to Streetsboro, where we will pick up Interstate 480 again. We will take Interstate 480 West to Twinsburg, hop off of the supercharger, charge up, Hop back on 480 West, which will again take us to that same confluence of 271 and 480 and 422. We'll take 422 back east to home. We will then check the total kilowatt hours used for the trip, add the roof box and do the whole thing all over again, and then check the kilowatt hours used for that trip. We are at the Tesla Supercharger in Twinsburg, Ohio at the Sheets Gas Station on the first leg of our journey without the roof box on top. And on our first route so far, we've gone 90 miles. We've used 26 kilowatt hours of electricity, which averages out to 284 watt hours per mile. So that's what we have on this first leg. We'll compare this to the second leg, although the real comparison will be when we get back home. All right, we are back from the first trip. It was 121 miles. We used 34 kilowatt hours of electricity, which worked out to 281 watt hours per mile. Now we're going to put the roof box on top and do the same thing all over again, and we will compare. So this was the no box, then we're gonna do the roof box. So I'm gonna reset this one. I'm actually gonna leave this one so we can compare them. Let's see what we come up with. All right, so the roof box is mounted and secure. This is the Yakima Grand Tour 16. Mounts with these levers. Ratchets inside the box allow you to tighten it. And they click into place when you're done. It's pretty aerodynamic, but let's see what the range penalty is for having it up there. As we make our way back on 480 West from Streetsboro uh, towards the southeast suburbs of Cleveland where we'll get back on 422, stopping first in Twinsburg to charge, 
Uh, an unfortunate situation has developed. The weather has kind of turned against us. Even though we're doing this the same day, within a few hours of the first time, kind of a front has come through. It's gotten very windy and somewhat rainy. So that's gonna work really against the roof box uh, more than the roof box itself, perhaps. So it's being penalized on top of its own issues, but we'll just have to wait and see how it turns out. But I wouldn't be surprised if this adds a percent or two of range loss, just the weather change. Uh, the wind was really strong. It's pretty much a crosswind. We didn't go south, due south that much. And now we're going uh, north west. So the wind's a little bit behind us, but still a crosswind. Um, but it's unfortunate the conditions weren't more similar. Here we are back at the Twinsburg, Ohio Tesla supercharger at the Sheets gas station. And on this trip so far, we've gone 90 miles, which I checked is exactly the same distance we went the first time. We've used 27 kilowatt hours of electricity. I looked back on my notes and we had used 26 kilowatt hours of electricity uh, without the roof box. So we've used one more kilowatt hour. We are back. As you can see, we used 297 watt hours per mile with the roof box compared to the original 281 watt hours per mile without the roof box. This means we averaged 16 watt hours per mile more with the roof box than without. Dividing the 16 additional watt hours per mile from the total 297 watt hours per mile gives us a loss of 5.3872% with the adverse wind and rain with the roof box. Let's just round this down to an even 5% reduction. Let's assume the Tesla has a 72,000 watt hour, that's 72 kilowatt hour, usable battery pack. Without the roof box at 281 watt hours per mile, we would go 256 and a quarter miles with that full use of the battery. With the roof box at 297 watt hours per mile, with that same full battery pack, we would only go 242 miles, a reduction of 13, almost 14 miles, again, just over 5%. So as you can see, there is a slight reduction of 14 miles on a completely full battery to a completely empty battery, which you wouldn't do. So you're probably gonna lose in the range of 12 miles of range on a usable battery. It's certainly not zero, but it's also not the end of the world. With the profile of that box on top of the car and the air getting trapped between it and the roof of the car, I really thought this was going to decrease the range by about 10%. So I guess I was half right. In any case, we hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit that bell button to be notified of our upcoming content. Thank you.